All right, so looks like it's working now. Um, today we're doing invader problems. Hugely important day. I need you guys to be on it with um, the calculations. So when I'm hollering for stuff, we need stuff. Do you not have a copy of these problems? It's going to be hard for you to keep up without because we're referring back to problems a lot. Not not your best option. So keep that in mind. I'm going to print this stuff out for next next unit. Um, all right. What is this invasion problem thing? Um, these tips that I have on this page are going to be a lot more helpful once I actually teach the content. So for now, what's going on? All you're doing is when you invade, I want you to think about these one through five, one through four on the board. Think about these as Earth, right? Each one of these exists on its own as an equilibrium system. A space invader comes and attacks the Earth. What do you think we're going to do if space invaders came and attacked the Earth? We'd probably, after we panic, we'd probably fight them, right? We know Will Smith did Independence Day, that whole bit, right? So when the space invaders attack, which is either a strong acid or a strong base, an H plus or an OH minus, which is a base invader, get it? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> At home you can't hear it, but they're laughing so hard they can't even breathe. It's pretty impressive. Um, when the base attacks, we're going, or the acid attacks, we're going to have a war. After the war, we're going to reassess, check out the damage, and see what happens. And we'll base our final pH after the invasion. Sometimes the aliens win. Sometimes the Earthlings win. Depends. I don't know what to call them. So I, I feel the best way to actually teach this stuff is just to jump into the problems. Lots of problems, lots of writing, lots of calcs. Alan, I'm dependent on you. Thanks, thanks. Need you. Got my back. Okay, so best thing to do, these are simple because they're not really wordy, and writing stuff on the side is not as crucial, but I find that, especially with high school schoolers as yourselves, it's the, the overwhelmingness of the information of how much you're presented with that makes these problems difficult. So I like to jot down what I'm mixing. I am mixing 125 mils of 0.25 molar H+. And I'm mixing it with a 125 mil buffer system. And in my buffer, I have one molar acetic acid. And again, I'm using AC as acetate. And, um, one molar acetate. So I have 125 mils total of those guys. So stop and think, what kind of problem is this? Do you see how this is an invasion problem? If we did not have the H+, plus, we just have a, a buffer problem that could solve the pH that way. But we can't because we need, a, we need to go ahead and invade, attack, because that's what's happening, and see how that affects the pH. So whenever we have a war, we always do something called what what I call a stoic table. Now, in a stoic table, we have to use moles, not molarity, like in a rice table. I had a student last period ask me, is all this invasion stuff, is that like what it's called? I'm like, no, don't be calling invasions and all that. That's my way of getting people under the age of 50 to actually understand this thing. Okay, So we are going to make the invasion happen. The hardest part is writing the invasion equation. Ah, that's the invasion equation. The invasion equation always starts with the invader. The invader is going to attack the beaker that has this in it. So we can put this in a beaker. The invader can only react with one part of the buffer. In this case, what's the invader going to react with? The AC minus. And what's the invader, what is this going to make? HAC. It is not a coincidence that when you invade, one of the buffer components makes the other. That's not a coincidence. That's what buffers do. So you should attack one of the parts to make the other. That's only if you're attacking a buffer. We can attack any of that. But in this particular case, when you attack a buffer, you react with one part to make the other. Now, because this is a stoic table, we're going to put in how many moles are reacting to find things like limiting reagent and what's in excess. So this is a calc you have to get really fast at. When you have molarity and volume, how do you find moles? You just multiply and make sure that volume's in liters. So our H plus, we have 0.125 liters 
times 0.525. So how many moles? Yes, he's on it. AC minus, we have one molar of 0.125. I got this one. <laughs> and then here we have one times as well, 0.125. So that's where the starting our war. Okay, now looking at this war, we have this many moles of H plus and that many moles of AC minus. This is a normal limiting reactant problem. Who's going to run out first? H plus. Our poor alien is going to run out. So we lose that same amount. What happens here? We gain that amount. This is what makes it similar to a rice table. It's a one to one to one mole ratio. We lose, we lose, we gain. What's important here, do you see how that arrow is one directional? The war is going to come to an end. We're not going to be doing this back and forth and back and forth in the war. The war comes to completion. So when we're done with the war, something's going to run out. And who runs out? The H plus. How much AC minus do I have? 0 0.0594. How much HAC do I have? 191. There's something else, no? Did you round? It was 0.1906. 0.1906. Just, I just want to keep the addition straight so I can see that it's still adding up. All right, so that's how many moles we have. The war is done. All the aliens gone. This equation is really no longer. We have floating in our beaker this and this, because that's what's left over. What's left now? A that's a buffer. Do you see how that's a buffer? So now we have a problem you already know how to do. You know how to find the pH of a buffer. Here's the get problem, though. It's not going to be much of an issue here. Those are in moles. To use Henderson Hasselbach, to use possibly rice tables later, we got to be in what? Molarity. So we have to divide by total volume. That's another reason why I really like you writing your stuff here, because it's easier to see total volume here than there. So it is point, point 0.25. Now I'm just going to show you something. When we do Henderson Hasselbach, because we're dividing that ratio one over the other, we don't necessarily have to convert to molarity. But a lot of the other invasions we do, and you're going to see times where you actually have to. So our pH is equal to, I'm using Henderson Hasselbach, negative log. On the board you see that the Ka I have written on the side over there is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth plus the log of, just leaving it in moles, what goes on top? Uh, ion. ion of point, uh, okay, he found, he converted it for us. 0.238 divided by 0.7. So Alan converted those to molarity for us, which is fine. Do you all understand how you could have just put moles in, though? Yes. Only in the case of Henderson Hasselbach, though, which is not the case every time. So what is our pH? It's okay. You don't have to be that fast. 4.2. Two, three, eight. And I'm good with the three sig figs there. That looks horrible. That's another thing. Doing this on video now, I have to be neat, which is frustrating. All right, that's your first invasion. They're clapping. That's impressive. We have many more invasions to do. We're going to get through number 11 today. So. I know. So even when the bell rings, you might have to stay till 5 today. Depends. Oh, JK. All right, let's move on. Next problem. 125 mils of 0.5 molar base invader, o minus, OH minus, is added to 125 mils of 0.5 molar acetic acid. I don't always have to invade a buffer. I can invade anything here. I can invade a weak acid, a solid, a buffer, or a strong acid base. I'm invading a what? No, weak, acid. weak acid. I'm invading a weak acid. So I start with my invader. This equation's easy. I don't have a choice. I have to attack. That invader has to attack the HAC. War is going to end, so we have a reaction going to completion. We make AC minus plus water, which we don't care about. So we're looking for the pH, so we need to have the war and see what's left over. We're going to start with our OH moles, since we're in a stoic table, 
moles. So 0.5 times 0.125 liters is? Now you might see, I think they're corrected, but in the homework solutions, a lot of times they use millimoles. To get a millimole, it's just mils times molarity. So everything's changed by a thousand, but at the end of your work, it's going to be the same, so don't worry about it. But I don't like millimoles for some reason. They make me nervous. I like regular moles. So what do we get here? Same thing. We don't have any acetate yet. 625? All right, 0 0.0625. So how much are we going to lose? 0 0.0625. Lose 0 0.0625. And we're going to gain 0 0.0625. Bam, bam, but oh, 0 0.0625. Now I just want to make a little side note here. If you notice, we're adding a base to an acid. A lot of people think when you add the same moles of base to acid, why is the pH 7? Why is it neutral? Why isn't this a neutral reaction? Because it's a weak acid and a strong base. Because we're, we're creating a strong, we're adding a strong base, don't you think our overall pH should be kind of basic? Which it is, because look what we created. Even though we got rid of all the strong base, that AC minus is a conjugate base, so that's going to give us a bit of a basic pH. Okay? So, what kind of problem do we have here? I heard it, yeah, you got it, salt hydrolysis problem. This is now all we have left over, so now you treat this like a salt hydrolysis problem. We add it to what? Water in a rice table. But to put this into a rice table, we have to be in molarity, right? So what's our total volume? 0 0.250, so? 0 0.250, that's just weird. That's the molarity of what we're putting, that AC minus, into the actual rice table. So I'm losing the problem here a little bit, and it's going to be all day. I'm going to be losing problems, so you all have to refer to your um, sheets. We are mixing now. We're going to take our AC minus and add it to water, because that's all that we have left over in the solution. Everything else is gone. And we're going to get HAC plus... OH minus. Our original concentration of the AC minus is 0 0.250. We don't care about water. Which way do we shift? Right. right. Correct. So we get 0 0.250 minus X. Drop the X. X, X. Now we have a problem. What do we need here? A KB. They only have a KA. So I'm going to do my conversion. KB, if you are curious, is 5.6E negative 10. I'm going to just leave this as the work. Keep that in your calculator. You can use it for this, Alan. 0 0.250. We trump the X, so we get X then. I love him. 1.2. I've got a calculator genius in my midst. Negative 5, which is equal to what, though? We've got to stop to get credit on the AP. We need to say what that is. OH minus. So if I take the negative log of the 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth, I get the pH, pOH, I mean. Fourteen minus that. Beautiful. And that answers our question. And it is a little bit basic, because remember, even though I added equal moles of acid and base, I added a strong acid weak base, so I'm going to get a bit of an, a basic solution. That was our second invasion. All right. Questions? Oh, well, I don't know. Who won? I, I would say... They won. They changed society, yeah. They changed society to be slightly basic. So, yeah, I, I think the humans lost. The invaders won. There are so many casualties that if you want to remain on Earth, you have to kind of take on this basic alien lifestyle. The basic life. <laughs> so, okay. Here we go. 200 mils of point. 0.5 molar 
Base Invader is added to 125 mils of 0.5 molar acetic acid. So it's the same invasion we had earlier. We're just invading our acid with the base. So we do our stoic table. Going to go to completion, and we're going to make the acetate ion plus water. How many moles of base? It's all about that base. HAC. None of that yet. All right. Uh-oh. It's different. What happens? Yeah, so the at the end of the day, who won? The aliens won. Okay, so here's the situation. We ran out of this. I know we have some of this conjugate base left, but those are just minions compared to the strength of those aliens. Those aliens have taken over. Who do you think is dictating the pH? Aliens. The aliens. Whenever you have the alien left over, strong winds. I don't care. Now, in real chemical, chemistry terms, this conjugate base over here, yeah, it's going to contribute a little bit of OH minus to the solution, but not enough to change this pH significantly as is. So you only deal with what's strong. What is this difference here of moles? 0.0375 moles. How do I find pH from moles of OH? Oh, negative log? I need molarity first, guys. Don't forget that. What do I divide this by? 0.325 liters. That is crucial. So I have, here I'm going to write it out here, negative log of my moles of 0 0.0375 divided by the liters of 0.325 liters. I have to convert to molarity before I can find the pOH in this case. So my pOH is, give me, whatever. Just give me three. I don't care. Sig figs are messed up. 0.938 is equal to the pOH. So am I going to get a basic solution here? I hope so. What is it? Uh, so, see, in that last one, we had we had a little bit of basic acceptance. We had to like take in the basic life, and we ha we got a pH of nine ish, right? This one, the, the base invader, totally won. Look at that, bam! Totally took over. All right, how y'all feeling? Feeling good. We get, we're making good time. Making good time. Uh, we still have four really long problems to do, but we're making good time. Yeah, this is the longest day of the year. Tomorrow is not real short either, but not as bad as today. Because you're going to now see how the AP layers their problems. Okay, This is a typical AP problem, and the layering basically is forcing us to go through everything we've learned about equilibrium and acid-base equilibrium in one problem. So. What is A asking for? The pH of a two molar solution of acetic acid. Classify. I want you to stop and classify. It's just a weak acid problem. You did that last unit. Okay? So while I'm thinking about it really quick, because our days are so packed, I'm not having time to hand out the test full blown. So when you come in for corrections, I can give it to you. I will file them on my own time when I have time. But you just need to come in by next Friday to get those corrected. And you can look at them at that point. All right, back to this. A, we're going to add our weak acid to, a, to water and put it in a rice table. We're back in the equilibrium world. What's our original concentration? Two molar, nope, minus x, plus x, plus x. We're going to trump all of these x's. Not all of them, the 2 minus 1. And so we get um, x squared over 2 is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. I'm doing this fast because you should know how to do this, right? OK. Um, so we get x, which is equal to the, you guys are really good on your test for the most part about writing in that what x is. OK, that's it. And then if we take the negative log, we get a pH of 2.22. So how do you all feel about that part? 
All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Is that the Polaroid picture one? Shake it. Sh sh shake it like a Polaroid picture. Yeah. And the thing is, what's going to be funny is when you watch this video, you literally only hear me. So it sounds like I'm crazy. They don't hear you guys like singing and like egging me on to do different things. All right. Ready for B? This is where the layering happens. Now we take this nice happy acid and we do something to it. It says a buffer is prepared by adding one liter, or 0.1 liter, excuse me, of two molar acetic acid. So we're going to take 0.1, uh, that looks like an L, 0.1 liter of two molar acetic acid, and we're going to add 0.1 liter of one molar sodium hydroxide. And in doing so, we're going to actually make a buffer. But they're, they're giving us a hint. They're saying, hey, after the war, you're going to have a buffer. So what are we actually base invading here? OH minus plus HAC. And what do we make? Goes to completion. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So our moles of OH minus are 0.1 times 1. And then our moles of 0.1 times 2 is 0.2, none of this yet. So we're going to lose 0.1 moles, lose 0.1 moles, and gain. I had a student last time let the whole class go by without asking me, why are we subtracting 0.1? Do you all understand why we're subtracting 0.1? Okay. So this runs out. One of these has to run out. So this is 0.1, and this is? Point one. Are my numbers? I feel like this is wrong. Okay. No, I feel like I don't remember this being point one and point one, but oh well. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. So, what do I have left over? Yeah, but what kind of system do I have left over? Yes, we do have moles. We have lots of moles left over of a buffer. We have a buffer system left over. And it told us you're going to make a buffer by invading with OH, which is what we did. So um, I could divide both of those. You know what? I know we're going to need this number later, so let's go ahead. These problems layer so crazy-like. Let's go ahead and figure out what our molarity of each of these is. So what do I divide this by? 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So what is my molarity? I end up with a 0.5 molarity of each of these. So those are my molarities. Um, if I'm going to find the pH of this buffer, what is the pH equal to? Uh, so negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth plus the log of oh, plus, plus the log of 1, right? So that goes away. Okay, hold on just a second. You, you, the, the problem is asking for H plus concentration, though. So if it's asking for H plus concentration, isn't this H plus? pH is negative log of H. Negative log, oh, that is the H plus concentration. Do you all see that? Okay, because if we were to take the negative log of it, we get pH. And how do we get to H plus? 10 to the negative that. So this is H plus. So our H plus concentration, which is what the problem's asking for, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter. You all with me? Okay. So this is where I'm losing problem, and I'm going to have to continue, but I've got them in my little hands to read. So I'm going to keep up and now do part C. Suppose that 0.1 liter of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid, well, acid invader, is added to 0.0 for liter of the buffer prepared in part B. That was our buffer. What was that? It was a 0.5 molar, right, of each of those, and it was AC minus and H, AC. That's why I had to find the molarity, because I'm not using all the moles. I'm using only using 0.04 liters of however much I had. So that's my new problem. Do you see how if I just write this, I'm in a lot better shape? Because now I can invade. 
What's my invasion equation? Goes to completion to make HAC. So I'm going to put moles in here. 0.5 molar times 0.1 is 0 0.05. 0 0.5 times 0 0.04 is at 0 0.02. And then this is also 0 0.02. How much am I going to lose? Oh, they win. Which is, even though it's sad that the invaders win, it sure makes our lives, whoops, this is 0 0.04, but who cares? It makes our lives easier because to find the hydrogen ion concentration, which is what they're asking for, we've got the moles of hydrogen just divide by the total volume of 0.14 liters, and that's going to be the hydrogen ion concentration, which is all they're asking for, which is 0.21. Do we understand? Maybe? Sweet. Uh-oh. I don't like the kind of... I am highly encouraging you to come and talk to me in the next 24 hours, meaning tomorrow morning. I don't want to see you at my house tonight, um, and ask questions about this stuff. If I were to like to do a Skype at night, would you all like be all over that like a chat room or whatever? No. No, I would not. <laughs> if I were a good teacher, I would do that, but I suck. All right. Are we good? Can we move on to number... Are we only on number nine? Yeah, nine. Oh, nine is next. Okay. Bam. Number nine. A four gram sample of NaOH. So four grams of base invader is dissolved in enough water to make 0.5 liters. What's the pH? Yeah, it's easy. Classify. Strong what? Strong base. How do I find the, con the pH of a strong base? Negative log of the concentration. How do I find concentration? Four grams. For every one mole, I have 40 grams. So that's equal to 0.1 moles of NaOH. How do I get to concentration? Moles per liter is going to give me the OH concentration, which is equal to 0.2. If I take the negative log of that, I get POH. That's what you all did on the test. The easiest problem that you were given, you made redonkulous because it was just a negative log of 4 point, 2 point something. That was it. I wanted to pretty much slap all of you across the head. There are, Lazar's like me. There's other reasons I would like to slap you. Maybe not about that particular problem, but believe me, there's plenty of reasons. Part B. Now what? Suppose. Four grams of NaOH is dissolved in one liter of a solution. So it's a liter of stuff, but what is in that liter? 0.5 molar NH3 and 0.5 molar NH4 plus. Assuming no change in volume and no loss of NH3 to the atmosphere, calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ion after a chemical reaction has occurred. So ridiculous. Like, you needed any of that information. So, looking again, do you see why just writing this makes your life clean and easy? So, what is this? No. We're invading a buffer. I don't know if it's going to be a buffer. We have to see. But we have to invade the buffer. And we're going to invade the buffer. And what, the o, what is the OH going to react with? NH4+. plus. What made you choose that? Okay. It's going to donate the proton to make the other thing, right? 
So it's all of those things you guys are thinking combined. I just want to make sure, because I think a lot of people would try to add OH minus to NH3. If you're making stuff, here's a, here's a good rule of thumb. If you're making stuff you can't name, you've got a problem. Because I had people like add NH3 and make NH2 minus. Have you ever seen NH2 minus ever? No, it's not. It's always stuff you've seen. Okay, you're, you're making things harder than you need to be. So this is a mole table, a stoic table. So we figured out moles up here. It's the same number of grams. So we have 0.1 moles. And we're adding it to 1 liter of 0.5 molars. So that's 0.5. And this is 0.5. How much are we going to lose? 0.1. Lose 0.1. Gain 0.1. Uh-oh. Bye-bye. What do we have here? 0.4 and here? 0.6. And this is moles of each of these. What do I have left over? What kind of system after the war? Yeah, I have a buffer. So I have a buffer with only these two things floating around. What kind of Henderson-Hasselbalch equation should I use? POH. POH is equal to the negative log. The KB of ammonia is on the board. It's the same as the KA of acetic acid, if you haven't noticed plus the log, are you okay with me not converting those to, to liters? I mean, to molarity. Yes. Okay. It would be the same thing. Oh, it's one liter, so I did convert them to molarity. Ha! One, one. And so I get what over what? Ion over base. So what is my POH? And then 10 to the negative of that, because I need the OH concentration as my final answer. Can I, can I show you guys something? I really don't want to do this. If you are barely hanging on right now, I want you to put your head down and cover your ears. If you totally get this, if you're asked for OH concentration instead of POH or H plus concentration instead of just the H, Look what you can do. Take out all the P's. But we've got to make that minus, minus that ratio. Do you see it's kind of like anti-logging everything? Does that make sense? It doesn't happen very often. I don't encourage this. I'm just saying. It's a little bit faster for the math savvy people. Don't get any crazy ideas. So this is how you do it. I just know that when they ask for that OH, I get frustrated because I did all this, found POH, then I have to go back and do 10 in the negative. So that just avoids that. Is that all that problem? Is there a C? No C. All right, number 10. We're making good time. Good to, good to Zeit. Yeah. Even though that's the wrong use of Zeit. Because that's like a good time. Not like good or abend. Go. All right. You don't know what K, oh, what, yeah, the case. I, oh, pace? Oh, like a good pace. I don't know either. Those of you who know German out there can email me at ddmartino at eensisd.net. Thanks. I'm kidding. All right. A buffer solution contains 0.4 moles of formic acid. Just for time's sake and writing's sake, I'm going to call formic acid that HF for F for formic. And that's not hydrogen fluoride, please. And this I'm going to call F minus. Good? All right. The ionization constant for formic acid is 1.8 E4. Calculate the pH. So what are we finding the pH of? Just a buffer. I know we're in moles, but the beauty about those moles is they're in a liter, so they're molarity as well. So to calculate, this is an acid situation. We can use Henderson-Hasselbalch. pH is equal to the negative log of the given K of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 plus the log of the ion, F minus, over, this seem to be popular numbers today for some reason. The pH is? 
So did you realize in the last few problems, part A is always something easy. It's always something we've done before. Sometimes it'll even be, write the K expression, okay? And then it gets harder and harder and harder as the problem progresses. Part B says, 100 mils of this buffer solution. I want to rewrite what's in this buffer. I have 0.4 molar originally, formic acid, and 0.6 molar formate. So that's what I'm adding to is diluted to a volume of one liter with pure water. The pH does not change. Discuss why the pH remains constant. The ratio remains the same. Because the ratio remains the same when you dilute, you're diluting both the the acid and the conjugate equally, the pH is not going to change, okay? All right, so let's look at, I think this is still, whoa, whoa, sorry. I am trying to get this. There. I'm trying not to have to move this, so don't y'all raise. I'm just er erasing it. All right, so um, part C then which I'm working on now, says a 5 mil sample of 1 molar H plus is added to 100 mils of the original buffer. Remember that buffer was point, was it 6 in the ion and 4 in the, four in the acid? Um, 100 mils of that. So that's what we're doing. What kind of problem is that? Invader, and again, we're calculating the H3O plus. So, what are we going to start for the invasion? Plus F minus makes HF. Good. And so, our original moles, one molar of five mils is 0.05 moles, and this is. 0.1, yeah, 0.1 times 6 is 0.06, and this is 0.04. So how much are we going to lose? 0 0.00. 0 .00. Oh, the poor alien is not going to make it. But of course, again, we have a buffer, 0 0.005. So none of this, 0 .0055, 0 .0045, 0 0.0045. Oy, how about that? Bam, problem solved. All right, but actually, would that have changed the pH? Yeah, it would have been the same ratio, so the pH would have been the same. So we're going to put this in Henderson Hasselbach, and so we get pH is equal to the negative log. What was that? Org. 1.80 negative 4 plus the log of the ion 0 0.055 over 0 0.045. So pH is equal to, and then 10 to the negative log of that. That's it. How y'all feeling? We got we're almost we're almost done. Only one more part to this problem and then a short 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 other problem. Good, bad, indifferent? Good. Good. All right. Can I erase this so I can make room for the next one? Yay. Bam 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 bam. All right. An 800 mil sample of 2 molar formic acid, I should probably do like that, whatever, is mixed with 200 mils of 4.80 molar sodium hydroxide. What kind of problem is this? 
An invader. We're invading something different, though. We're not invading the buffer. What are we invading? A weak acid. So we're going to do OH minus, and it's going to just invade our acid. Easy reaction. Not much we can do, but do what? All right, so we've got to convert this stuff to moles. 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 is? 0 0.8 times, oh, 0 0.8 times 2 is 1.6 of the weak acid, and 4.8 times 0.2 is 0.96. We have no conjugate base yet. So minus 0.96, minus 0.96, plus 0.96, zero. What's 1.6 minus? 1.6 minus 0.96? It's okay. 0 0.64, and this is 0 0.96. What do we have left over? A buffer again. All right, so we have a buffer left over. We're looking for the H3O plus concentration. pH is equal to the negative log of, what was it, 1.80 negative 4? 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 plus the log, what goes on top? 0 0.96 over 0.64. All right. 3.92, and our final thing is 10 to the negative. One point two times 10 to the negative fourth. Good job. So do you see how these problems are very much layered, and they break apart the solution and do different things to it? Um, this next one, I didn't choose for its difficulty. I chose it because it's so easy. People overthink it and try to make it something it's not. I want you to read that and tell me, through classifying what we've been talking about, what am I mixing with what? Strong acid with a weak acid. If I took like hydrochloric acid and threw some acetic acid in there, think anything's going to happen? Exactly. So basically, not basically, acidically, <laughs> acidically, the strong is dictating the pH. Because these two things don't react, H plus plus H plus don't make more H plus. They're just H plus. So the H plus contributed by the strong acid is all that's going to dictate the pH. So forget about propionic, propionoic acid. Forget about the Ka. We don't need any of that. All we need to do is figure out the concentration of H plus and then take the negative log of it. So if we have 0 0.0250 moles, what is our total volume in this problem? 0.365. So that's going to give me an H plus concentration of? And then how do I find pH? Negative log of that. So I'm good with one point. That's fine. Whatever. I don't, Sig figs, I've been a horrible teacher about today, but I don't care. I'm really worried about content today. We'll worry about Sig figs once you master this. So do you see how that problem's easy? So did you see how when I say you have to stop and classify? Look at what's reacting and think about it. Once you figure that out, then, then it's easy. Then it's the same stuff over and over and over again. All right. Good job, guys. We are done.